Hey guys, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed part one of this two-part series on the Catskill region of New York State. In this second part of my adventure, I will continue downstream to check out how some of the locals use the area's amazingly fresh, clean mountain water. I plan to make some stops at local microbreweries, along with a must-visit destination if you love trout fishing, and specifically, fly fishing. I will also take a little bit of a detour as I attempt to visit both Woodstocks. Did you know that the famous Woodstock Music Festival in 1969 took place almost 50 miles from the actual town of Woodstock? More to come on that as I visit both. So let's start day two as I head back up the mountain to base camp. I've got my buddy Jay and his son Lucas along for this part of the journey. I was eager to show Jay this cool trail along with the camps that I had found. Shortly before we headed up the mountain, Jay shared something with me which made this moment even more special. Jay purchased this very nice Toyota 4Runner Trail Edition, new back in 2011. At the time he purchased it, he had planned to hit the trails and have fun with its many capabilities. As it happens with many of us, life takes us many places and this 4Runner never really had the opportunity to see trails. Jay and his 4Runner, now with over 225,000 miles on it, are just starting the second half of life. Only in a 4Runner would you be able to say that. As we arrived at our base camp, it was time to set up, and also allow Scout to burn off some energy. Although this was not Lucas's first time camping, it was his first time setting up a tent with his dad. And he did a great job while having fun doing it. When we plan these trips as parents, I know we second guess ourselves on will our kids enjoy them as much as we do. I started taking my girls camping before they were both five years old. They have always had the greatest of times. And I know that Lucas, or should I say Bruce Lee, had an awesome experience too. Now that we had set up camp, I started cooking up some sausage and peppers for dinner. Jay and Lucas headed out to collect wood. This area was rich with fallen lumber. Everywhere we turned, there was a downed tree. Finding the ones that were adequately dry was a task. But within a short while, we felt ready for what we knew was going to be a cold night. Yeah, I think it's a, a fabulous spot. It's the kind of spot you don't tell anybody about. After a nice dinner of sausage and peppers, we headed out for a little hike. In fairness to Lucas and Scout, we did not want to spend the whole evening sitting around the fire without doing some exploring. And for a kid his age, his appreciation for all things nature was so cool. The further we walked into the woods, the more his imagination of what could be or have been was fun to listen to. It was great to have reinforced that kids love the outdoors more than anything else. And you know what I mean. It's my ice cream. As we wrapped up a truly awesome day and settled down by the fire, we were left with only one question. When can we do this again? The next day, Jay and Lucas would be headed home, and I would be headed off to start my day at the original site of the Woodstock Music Festival at Bethel Woods.
Next morning we woke once again to the simple quiet sound of the stream beside us. We immediately started the day by trying to collect wood to keep our fire going for a short while before we headed out. The water was boiling and I had the French press along with a hot chocolate packet ready to go. To say that this morning was cold was an understatement. I would admittedly say that it was not an easy sleep and that Scout had never been held so tight through any night before this. After finishing up our much needed hot drinks, Scout and Lucas took a quick stroll along the stream. These two had created a special bond. After they returned, I now headed out on my way to Bethel Woods, home of the original Woodstock Festival, and Jay and Lucas would be heading home. As I made my way back onto the pavement, I passed through many little towns and villages. Most had that sleepy little town feel, with a stream running behind Main Street, followed by a waterfall, a park, and a lake. Although these beautiful little towns are likely only quiet because it is their off season and just days before Christmas, I felt lucky to have been passing through at this special time of year. Just down the road from the museum on the far side of the property is a small park with the historical marker of the actual field and stage of the Woodstock concert event. As you look at this photo, I am standing in the lower right hand corner of the field. To the left of me is where the stage was built and almost finished just minutes before the concert started on that day in August of 1969. On the back side of this hill is where you can see live concerts today along with a visit the museum. Although on this day I'm not able to visit the museum, I've heard many stories about it from friends and family. Upon stepping into the museum, one is immediately struck by the architectural brilliance that seamlessly integrates the building with its natural surroundings. Large windows placed within the museum give a panoramic view of the Bethel Woods. The museum regularly hosts events, workshops, and interactive sessions that encourage visitors to actively participate in the world of art. Whether it's a guided tour, a hands-on workshop, or a lecture by a prominent artist, the museum creates a dynamic space for dialogue and exploration. The outdoor sculpture garden is another highlight of the museum. Sculptures carefully placed amidst the natural landscape invite visitors to meander through the garden and appreciate art in an open air setting. The integration of art and nature further reinforces the museum's dedication to creating a holistic and immersive experience. The outdoor amphitheater is one of the best places to see a show. It features covered seating for 5,000 and lawn seating for an additional 11,000. I have seen many concerts over the years from Jimmy Buffett, Zach Brown, and Dave Matthews, just to name a few. If you're in the area during the summer, you should try and see a show here. Regardless of the act, if the weather is right, you can't go wrong with a seat on the lawn and a cold beverage from the beer garden as well. After spending about an hour exploring the grounds, I jumped back into my Jeep and started heading northeast. My next planned stop was the town of Livingston Manor with the intentions of stopping by one of the Catskill's most famous breweries, the Catskill Brewery. Little did I know, Catskill Brewery was not the only brewery in town. About a half mile away, I came across from Upward Brewing Company. Upward sits up on a hill, coincidentally, with a view of a small pond and an area that includes a small outdoor music space. Understandably, on a cold winter day at noon, it was quiet when I visited. It did not stop the bartender from asking me if I would like a quick tour of the back of the house where all the beer magic happens. Before I left, I grabbed some of their flagship Basecamp Lager and their Breadwinner IPA for the road. 
I am definitely looking forward to coming back in the spring with my wife as well as some friends to enjoy this outdoor space. As I continued down the road through Livingston Manor, I finally made my way to my original destination, Catskill Brewery. As I pulled into Catskill Brewery, I immediately felt warm and welcome with the sight of a big red barn. Catskill Brewery is known for some of the largest variety of microbrews in the area. They also are always sure to mention that their beer is made with the finest water, Catskill Mountain Water. Out front, you will also find a painted dove as also seen back at Bethel Woods Art Center. This is part of the Sullivan County Catskills Dove Trail, commemorating the 50th anniversary of the 1969 Woodstock Festival. Each permanently mounted dove is hand painted by a professional local artist and is inspired by the legendary events held in 1969. Inside you'll find a building that Catskill Brewery takes great pride in that is LEED certified, which simply means that they are doing the right thing for the local environment when making their delicious brews. This place is very nice whether you want to grab a seat at the bar or maybe on a warmer day sit outside and grab a bite from the Catskill food truck. As for me, I was just passing through and I left with some of their favorite beers. For me, it was special release, the Dixon Home Imperial Stout with Cocoa Nibs and their Little Quarry Franconian German Style Red Beer. Whether you like a mouthful of beer or beer names, you will love this place. So as I left Catskill Brewery, I was looking to move quickly across the Catskills to get to the original town of Woodstock. But not too far away down the road, I ran into a sign which, unfortunately, I just could not pass up. And it was the Catskills Fly Fishing Center and Museum. And as I approached there, I pulled up and, to be honest with you, I really wasn't sure if I should cross this bridge or not. But thank God there was a sign that basically said, you're going the right way. Now, as for trout fishing, I've been watching people fr trout fish for years. More specifically, fly fishing. And the attraction has been luring me for many years, but to be honest, I've never really tried it. So as I pulled into the museum, I looked at the building and I almost turned around because I was a bit underwhelmed and really was not sure what was available here. But as I walked in, I quickly was very fortunate to meet Nancy. Nancy told me, hey listen, looks like you don't have a lot of time, which was true. And she took me on a quick walkthrough of three buildings. This facility is a lot larger than it appears, and to be quite frank with you, there's a lot to see here, and I'm looking forward to coming back in the near future. The part that surprised me the most was why the museum was at this location in the first place. The Catskills are the home base of America's fly fishing history. Locals guided wealthy travelers in this area using new and improved bamboo rods along with updated flies that floated on top of the water. Many referred to this time in the late 1800s as the Catskills Dry Fly Revolution, and it shaped fly fishing across the world. So as I left the Catskills Fly Fishing Museum, I headed downstream and quickly came across the Livingston Manor Covered Bridge. The Livingston Manor Covered Bridge was built by John Davidson in 1860. Now, I've always thought covered bridges were cool, especially if you have an appreciation for carpentry. As you can see within this structure, it's pretty amazing the work that goes into this. But little did I know, about 14,000 covered bridges were built in the United States, mostly between 1825 and 1875. As of today, only about 750 still exist, and most of which are in the northeastern United States. So once again, I was back on the road making an effort to try to get to Woodstock, New York. 
Now, Woodstock's about 55 miles or about an hour and 20 minute drive from where I was in Livingston now. So if you're planning on visiting both of these locations on the same day, well, you're gonna be working your way across quite a beautiful mountain range as you head through the Catskills. And as I made my way to Woodstock, taking more elevation and heading further north, the mountaintops and the ground once again turned to white. In comparison, Bethel, New York, where the Woodstock Festival was held, has a population of about 4,500 people. Woodstock, New York, has a population of about 6,500. Although I will say, not in comparing the two towns too much, but Woodstock, New York has a much more vibrant Main Street area. So if you're looking to do a lot of hiking and exploring, both areas are absolutely great. But if you're looking to walk in Main Street and spend some time looking at shops, hitting a couple of restaurants, or just enjoying the day with some friends and family, Woodstock, New York is definitely more of the tourist destination. But you can't quite get the same live music here as you do in Bethlehem. So as I wrap up my third day and my last here in the Catskills, in this two-part video series on the Catskills, I would encourage you all to take the time to come and visit the Catskills. Whether you're coming from anywhere in the Northeast or anywhere in the U.S. or outside the U.S., you will find this area beautiful no matter what time of year. If you are here during the winter time, there are many mountains to ski as well as snowshoe. So please make sure you plan ahead because it does get very busy, especially on the weekends. In closing, I hope to get back to the Catskill area this summer or spring to share more with you on the area. Before you go, please just a reminder, if you didn't get a chance to check out part one of this series or one of my other videos, please do so. And as a quick reminder, I've set a goal to have a thousand subscribers by March. I'm working hard towards it, so I'd hope that you take the time to subscribe, like, and share if you like what you see. I'm John, and thanks for watching Storm King Expedition.